WKYT this morning, it's 4.30. We're tracking the latest into a homicide investigation here in Lexington. Someone found an 18-year-old dead inside a vehicle. A man's been arrested in Lexington after shots were fired into a home this weekend. And today, the man accused of killing a Western Kentucky 7-year-old will be facing a judge on rape and murder charges. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. It's your Monday as Thanksgiving week is underway, and we are so glad you're up and at it with us this morning. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. It is very, very chilly this it morning. Is. You'll <laughs> definitely need a big, heavy winter coat if you don't have one, Micah. Yeah, you will need that. No doubt about it. We just missed the moon actually going below the horizon. That went down pretty quickly, but outside right now, it's a beautiful shot, and that moon was humongous sitting there just above the horizon. But you know what? As we go throughout the day, we're going from the teens in many locations. You see 19 there in Danville, Richmond, and Mount Sterling, and that takes you into the afternoon right there around 45 degrees. So we will jump these temperatures pretty quickly, but when you're coming from the teens, it's just going to be a cold day in store. Those winds out and about as well. Now, we'll stay dry today and for tomorrow, but what about as we head toward midweek? For Thanksgiving. I'll get into that in just a few minutes. Okay, a lot of folks watching for that. Thank you. WKYT is tracking the investigation into a homicide in Lexington. The Fayette County Coroner says a young man was found dead inside an SUV. The 18 year old was found in the driver's seat of an SUV near Kent Drive and Cabot Drive at the intersection there about 8 o'clock last night. The coroner says he died of a head injury, but investigators are not sure exactly how. It does appear that another person has taken this young person's life. Um, there is injuries and the way he's positioned in the vehicle at this time, we're not able to, to see what type of injuries. There is a fairly large amount of blood, uh, so we do believe it is a head injury. The coroner there, Gary Ginn, says the young man is from Lexington, but he is not releasing his name just yet. Police also have not said if they have any information on possible suspects. Lexington police are also investigating after someone fired shots into an apartment complex and a home. The first shooting happened on Cove Lake Drive, the second a few minutes later on Winter Park Drive. There, the homeowner tells us a bullet came through the window and the family's front door. WKYT's Hillary Thornton has more. The first call came from an apartment here along Cove Lake Drive where police say someone shot into the building before leaving the area in a black vehicle. Just shortly after that, shots fired call into that apartment on Cove Lake. Police were called for another shots fired, this time into a home here on Winter Park Drive. We didn't know what the noise was at first. Kind of scared us. We didn't know what was going on. And we seen the hole in the, the door, and the neighbor told us that some guy had walked up in, with a shotgun and just shot the the door. The gunshot going through the middle of the family's front door, making its way back into their kitchen, where the couple says it went through a cabinet and burst the pipe underneath their kitchen sink. I couldn't believe that somebody in broad daylight would just come up to the door and, and shoot the door. Thankful everyone is okay, including their two year old son. Those living in the home say they are unsure what the shooter was doing, but say they believe he was possibly looking for their teenage nephew. Man, you know, we had a little boy in there. Anything could have happened. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad it didn't happen, but uh, thank God. As Duggins and his girlfriend clean up the mess left behind, they say they are still in disbelief at the brazen attack on their home, just about a mile from the apartment that was also targeted. Shoots the door with a shotgun, walks across the street, gets in the car. And rise off. It's crazy, man. <laughs> it's crazy. Now, just a few minutes after all of this played out, police did find what they believe to be the suspect vehicle near the intersection of Squires Road and Richmond Road. Two people were taken into custody to talk with police. In Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. While police have not said if the two shootings are connected, they did make one arrest. 18-year-old Adrian Tate Washington was arrested and charged with wanton endangerment. According to an arrest citation, Washington was arrested in connection with the shooting on Winter Park Drive. Classes continue today at Fayette County Middle School after a threat. School leaders at Edith J. Hayes Middle School say that they've identified a student responsible for some threatening graffiti. A student found the message in a school restroom on Friday. The principal sent a letter to parents last night saying the student has been disciplined. 
And happening today, an Allen County man who's accused of killing a seven year old girl will be facing a judge for his arraignment. State police arrested Timothy Madden on Friday, nearly a week after finding Gabby Doolin dead in a creek near Scottsville High School. Gabby disappeared during her brother's football game. Madden is charged with murder, rape, and sodomy, as well as kidnapping. State police say that DNA records led them to Madden. In Franklin County, officers are investigating two separate shootings that hurt three people. Frankfurt police say the first shooting happened about 1.50 Sunday morning at St. Clair Street. Emergency crews rushed two people to Frankfurt Regional Medical Center for non-life-threatening injuries. And the second shooting happened at University Lodge on East Main Street. We're told the crews took their, uh, one person there to the hospital also with non-life-threatening injuries. Police have not released any descriptions of the suspects that they are looking for. State police are still trying to track down an inmate they say escaped from the Knox County Detention Center. 28 year old Harley Smith was arrested in August. He faces charges of theft and trafficking in a controlled substance. They, see, they say he escaped from the jail around 3 15 yesterday afternoon. A Lincoln County grand jury has indicted two people for a string of summer burglaries. The Advocate Messenger reports 34 year old Eric Blackwell and 24 year old Aileen Barry each face five counts of burglary and five counts of theft, more than $500. Blackwell and Barry are accused of breaking into homes and taking hundreds of dollars of items from each home. The burglaries happened between August 26th and September 7th. The time is 4.36 on WKYT this morning, and firefighters are warning that heating equipment is the leading cause of home fire deaths during the winter months. From 2007 through 2011, fire officials say space heaters were to blame for one-third of home heating fires and four out of five of the home heating fire deaths. Lexington firefighters say you should never use an extension cord to run a space heater, and you should turn portable heaters off when you're leaving the room or going to bed. Firefighters also say to test your smoke alarms and CO detectors every month and to change their batteries every six months. The drop in temperatures also means a lot of families are pulling winter clothing out of closets for the first time this year. If you find some of those coats no longer fit or you have a few older ones that you won't be wearing this year, there is a Lexington homeless shelter that wants them. Volunteers from God's Net on East 7th Street in Lexington are looking for donations for the 1,500 homeless Homeless people they serve. They are most in need of blankets, socks, and coats. Our community is so compassionate and understands the fact that if they give these items, they are going directly to people who need them. And no one wants to turn their back on those in need. Donations can be dropped off Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays from 10 until 2. God's Net is also collecting gently used toys for the annual Christmas store. The Camp Nelson Honor Guard is in need of funds to help those that they help to bury. The All Volunteer Honor Guard helps put together an enhanced burial that involves a wagon drawn by a horse, a riderless horse, and a cannon salute. Their services don't end at just funerals. The Honor Guard got a camera and monitor set up so that service members can do video calls with their families. To find out how to donate, go to our website, WKYT.com. We have a link under the Camp Nelson story. And it's good to have you along with us here Monday on WKYT at 438. We're just getting started. A lot more news on the way. And millions of children have food allergies that can show up at any time. Moms Every Day explains what to look for after the break. We're seeing those teens and 20s outside early this morning, but we will see a warming trend. But how warm are we going to be seeing that for Thanksgiving? I'll have that coming up next.